In a recent interview, Daisy Ridley was asked if it's going to feel good when Ray's parents are finally revealed in episode 8, and she responded saying that she thought the mystery was already solvable. I thought a lot was answered in The Force Awakens. Then, after the screening, I went for a drink with my agent and everyone, and we were chatting away, and I realized, oh, in their minds, it's not answered at all. So if the answer to who Ray's parents are is in The Force Awakens, and she's not Han and Leia's daughter. People were so presumptuous. People were like, well, like, you're Han Solo's daughter. And in my head, I was like, how do you know? Like, have you seen the film? <laughs> Clearly not, because I wasn't. And she's not Luke's daughter, which should have been obvious since it would be the most predictable reveal ever, but I'll go over that later in this video. That really only leaves one possible option, that she's the granddaughter of Obi-Wan Kenobi. But before we dive into the mountain of evidence that she's a Kenobi, I'd also like to mention that it does make perfect business sense for her to be a Kenobi as well, since it would be a perfect way to launch an Obi-Wan Kenobi anthology film that would explain how he had a child and what he was doing on Tatooine before episode 4. In fact, the host of Star Wars Celebration said in an interview recently that he's heard some inside rumors that Obi-Wan is indeed appearing in episode 8 and 9, I'm assuming as a force ghost, and that he's also convinced that Obi-Wan has a family connection to Rey. Pablo Hidalgo, the creative executive at Lucasfilm, also also said on Twitter that lineage is important in regards to Rey. And Disney isn't going to just abandon the Kenobis after investing four billion dollars into a franchise that made Kenobi a household name. And to put icing on the cake, Daisy Ridley was even asked specifically about the possibility of Rey being the granddaughter of Obi-Wan Kenobi. And she said, we will see in a year, just sit tight on that question. First of all, both Obi-Wan Kenobi and Rey have English accents. And this is no accident, as John Boyega actually has an English accent too. While we were on set, he, he was sick and tired of just being stuck in central London. But they forced him to use an American accent in the film. Yet they chose to keep Rey's accent English. And Rey most likely learned her accent from her parents as she was already old enough to speak and have an accent when she was dropped off on Jakku. Ray uses a Jedi mind trick on a stormtrooper with no training at all. I will remove these restraints and leave the cell with the door open. Which was the signature move of Obi-Wan Kenobi in the original trilogy and the prequels. You don't need to see his identification. We don't need to see his identification. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. While everyone else seems to struggle with the ability. Credits will do fine. No, they won't! You will bring Captain Solo and the Wookiee to me. While Rey and Obi-Wan are naturally gifted at it. Move along. Move along. Move along. And you'll drop your weapon? And I'll drop my weapon. Rey and Obi-Wan also wear similar clothes. Daisy Ridley even had this to say about her lineage. I guess because I've said that I'm solitary, that's how I begin. That is probably a big clue as to what um, <laughs> what it is. Some people seem to incorrectly think this means she's a Skywalker because Anakin and Luke grew up on lonely desert planets, but this couldn't be further from the truth. Luke and Anakin weren't solitary in the slightest. They both had friends growing up. You can waste time with your friends when your chores are done. And they both lived with their family. They were never alone. Rey, however, was in complete solitary, just like Obi-Wan during his exile on Tatooine, where he spent 20 years in isolation. Rey and Obi-Wan were both alone with no family at all, 
fending for themselves. In the comics, they even explain that Obi-Wan began to feel lost on the planet. He was no longer a Jedi, he became Ben the Forgotten Hermit. He would eat the same bland food every day for years. His days were spent battling inactivity, his days blurred together. Sound familiar? Not to mention, naming Ben Solo after Obi-Wan seems like obvious foreshadowing of old Ben Kenobi's relevance in the new trilogy. In Episode 4, Obi-Wan Kenobi took Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber out of a chest and handed it to Luke just like Rey did. Rey took the exact same lightsaber out of a chest and, at the end of The Force Awakens, hands it to Luke, perfectly paralleling what her grandfather did 30 years before. In the script, it even says, and she holds it out to him, an offer, a plea, the galaxy's only hope. If that's not a hint, I don't know what is. On top of that, Luke is now about to train a Kenobi, mirroring when a Kenobi trained him, and re-establishing the bond and long history of Kenobis and Skywalkers working together. Rey sneaks around Starkiller base just like Obi-Wan snuck around the Death Star. Obi-Wan hiring Han Solo for a job mirrors when Han Solo then offers Rey a job. Rey and Obi-Wan also have scenes in the rain and walking through hologram maps. Both Rey and Obi-Wan saved a droid that was carrying important information. When Rey force grabs the lightsaber out of the snow, the exact same song plays that we hear when Obi-Wan force grabbed Qui-Gon Jinn's lightsaber. Not to mention the other similarities with these scenes. Rey also screams no when she sees Han Solo being killed. No! Just like Obi-Wan screamed no when Qui-Gon was killed. No! Rey goes to Finn's side after defeating Kylo Ren, like Obi-Wan went to Qui-Gon's side after defeating Darth Maul. Rey's duel with Kylo Ren is almost identical to Obi-Wan and Anakin's duel in Revenge of the Sith. Their setting perfectly mirrors each other. Obi-Wan and Anakin dueled on a lava planet, while Rey, the descendant of Obi-Wan, and Kylo Ren, the descendant of Anakin, dueled in the snow. They fight through corridors. <laughs> They lock arms in the middle of battle. Ray disfigures Kylo and leaves him wounded on the ground. Obi-Wan disfigured Anakin and leaves him wounded on the ground. And right afterwards, both Obi-Wan and Rey pick up the exact same lightsaber off of the ground, one off of a lava planet and the other out of the snow. And last but not least, Rey even meditates when fighting Kylo Ren, just like Obi-Wan meditated during his fight with Darth Vader. <laughs> I already hear people typing in the comments. Well, actually, Obi-Wan couldn't have a child because the Jedi Order forbids Jedi from falling in love. Well, that didn't stop Anakin from marrying Padme and having two children with her, now did it. And the Jedi Order was destroyed so the Jedi Code would no longer apply for the 20 years that Obi-Wan spent on Tatooine. Plenty of time for him to fall in love and have children. But we don't even need to go that far as Obi-Wan actually has officially fallen in love before. In the Clone Wars animated series, Obi-Wan has a secret relationship relationship with Duchess Satine. Their relationship was only ended when Darth Maul, yes he's still alive, killed Satine in front of Obi-Wan with a one-of-a-kind darksaber. And it's entirely possible that Satine had a child in secret without telling Obi-Wan as to not ruin his reputation with the Jedi Council. Similar to how Obi-Wan kept Leia and Luke 
secret from Darth Vader. Now, maybe we have yet to meet Obi-Wan and Satine's child, or perhaps their child is another character from the animated series Rebels named Sabine. Sabine? Satine? Is that really just a coincidence? Sabine was born exactly two years before Satine was killed, and we haven't been told who Sabine's parents are yet. All we know is that Sabine was born on the same planet as Satine, called Mandalore, and her mother is supposedly still alive, even though we've never seen her before, and she could easily have an adopted mother like Leia had, or an aunt like Luke had. Also, in the most recent episode of Rebels, Ezra goes to Maul's hideout where Maul has a mural of Satine with the Darksaber displayed in front of it. Ezra and Maul then link minds and through a Force vision learn that Obi-Wan Kenobi is hiding on Tatooine. And at the end of the episode, Sabine finds and takes the Darksaber, which would be quite poetic for her to wield the very saber that killed her mother. And if she goes with Maul and Ezra to see Obi-Wan, this could be the first time Obi-Wan would meet his daughter. But would they really use a character from the animated series in the live-action movies? Well, yes, actually. Saw Gerrera, who's a main character in Rogue One, is from the Clone Wars animated series. And in the background of Rogue One, you can see the ship that Ezra and Sabine use in Rebels called the Ghost. <laughs> Ray is not a Skywalker. First of all, it would be the most obvious reveal in cinema history. Well over 90% of people already think she's Luke's daughter. Daisy Ridley even said that she'd like to see the look on people's faces when her parents are revealed, which means it's surprising, which means it's not Luke. Han Solo and Leia don't recognize Ray, and wouldn't they recognize their own niece? Pablo Hidalgo has hinted that Luke isn't Ray's father. Ray would have an American accent if she was raised by Luke. Maz Kanata implies her family's already dead. J.J. Abrams said that her parents aren't even in episode 7. Ray's parents are, uh, not in episode 7. Ray hears Obi-Wan speak to her through the Force. Ray? How would he even know about Rey if he wasn't related to her? I think this is that obvious sign that Daisy Ridley was hinting at. Luke can speak to his sister and his father through the Force. Leia. Luke. Father. So if he was related to Rey, he'd be able to speak to her too, but he doesn't. And all of you who think that Anakin's lightsaber calling to Rey somehow means she's a Skywalker, remember that Kylo Ren is Anakin Skywalker's grandson. Yet when he tries to force grab the saber, he fails and it finds its way to Rey instead. If it only found its way to the bloodline of who built it, then it would have went to Kylo Ren, not Rey. But that's not how the Force works. Not to mention the Skywalkers are all whiny, angry, and emotionally unstable. Oh, I don't even know what I'm doing here. We're wasting our time. While Kenobis are calm, collected, and level-headed. Finally, I'm making a video about the theory that Rey and Kylo Ren will fall in love in Episode 8. I absolutely love that theory, and of course, it works perfectly if Rey is a Kenobi. But if she's Luke's daughter, or related to both Obi-Wan and Luke, it'd be a little awkward for her to fall in love with her own cousin. But then again, there is a lot of family love between the Skywalkers, isn't there? <laughs> Rey's vision in The Force Awakens seems to have been inspired by the true story of Joan of Arc. The story revolves heavily around religion, which makes sense as the Force was clearly based off of religion, 
the dark side and the light, good and evil, heaven and hell. Your sad devotion to that ancient religion. Pokey religions and ancient weapons. May the force be with you was intentionally similar to the phrase, may the Lord be with you. Even Lor Senteca, the old guy who died at the start of The Force Awakens, was a member of the Church of the Force, which was mysteriously based on Jakku. In The Force Awakens novel, Rey's vision had an additional scene where she falls in a field. Dry grass, nearby a lightsaber slammed into the ground, a mist thrust, a statement of power. She didn't know, couldn't tell, a hand appeared to pull it upward. I believe this hand was that of Kylo Ren and the lightsaber? Well, the theory is that it was Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber and when Kylo Ren touches it, he has a vision just like Rey did when she touched Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber and just like Joan of Arc did. In The Messenger, the story of Joan of Arc, Joan is lying down in the grass of a field where she finds a a sword. When she touches the sword, she has a vision. She sees rays of light coming from the clouds. She sees a strange man as an adult and as a child. This man can see and interact with her in her vision. She injures the man. She sees a burning village. And then she sees an angel who tells her of the King of France who Joan is told to join forces with to defeat the English. The theory is that when Kylo Ren picks up Obi-Wan's lightsaber in the field, he has a vision where he sees Rey as a little girl and as an adult. And if you look closely, Rey even has the shape of wings behind her, symbolizing the angel that Joan of Arc saw in her vision. And to top it all off, the girl Kylo sees is named Rey. Not only would Rey fit the ray of light that Joan of Arc said accompanied her visions, but Rey translates to king in Spanish. So Kylo Ren sees the king and tries to join forces with her later in the film. I could show you the ways of the force! just like Joan of Arc saw the King of France. Another story of how Joan of Arc found her sword was that Joan heard voices coming from a church where they led her to a sword that was hiding behind an altar. This story is clearly the inspiration for Rey's side of the vision. Inside Maz Kanata's castle, which closely resembles a church, Rey hears voices that lead her to the sword. Now, perhaps the lightsaber in the field wasn't Obi-Wan's after all. Well, fear not, as there's another scene with Kylo Ren where he may have picked up Obi-Wan's lightsaber. In the trailers for The Force Awakens, we got a couple clips of Kylo and the Knights of Ren that were removed from the final version of the film. And if you look closely, there seems to be something in Kylo Ren's left hand. It's hard to tell. Some people think it's just his arm, but even here, it looks like there's something shiny and metallic in his hand. And if we compare some pictures side to side, it definitely looks like he's holding a lightsaber. His arm is nowhere near long enough for this to just be his arm. Also, you can see that his elbow bends here, so his arm couldn't bend a second time. So from all this, I'm pretty confident he is holding a lightsaber. And a lot of people have pointed out that it does indeed look like Obi-Wan's lightsaber. Or maybe Luke's green lightsaber, but it's almost certainly not Luke's as there has been a credible leak that says Luke does still have his green lightsaber in episode 8. So how exactly would Kylo Ren get his hands on Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber in this scene? Well, let's first figure out who he's killing in this scene as it looks like he picks the saber up from his dead body. Pablo Hidalgo has confirmed that this warrior was a clan leader. Now before The Force Awakens even came out, there were some early script leaks like this one that 
that said, flashback, exterior night battlefield, fierce battle, sword is being used by the clan against the Seven. So it appears that Kylo and the Knights of Ren, aka the Seven, just murdered an entire clan of people for that lightsaber. But why? Well, Kylo Ren seems to have a fascination with relics. He has Darth Vader's melted helmet, and when he sees Anakin's lightsaber, he says, That lightsaber. It belongs to me. Which implies that he's been searching for it and believes he is its rightful owner. Ryan Johnson, who's directing Episode 8, even tweeted that Raiders of the Lost Ark was a big inspiration for Episode 8. So the theme of searching for ancient relics will probably be a part of the new trilogy. So the story would go something like this. Kylo Ren is searching for Anakin's blue lightsaber when he hears that a clan is in possession of an ancient blue lightsaber. So he kills the entire clan for it, but discovers once he picks it up that it wasn't Anakin's saber after all, but in fact another legendary saber, that of Obi-Wan Kenobi. On top of all that, the official Star Wars Twitter page recently tweeted a picture of Obi-Wan's lightsaber, saying, what do you think Darth Vader did with Obi-Wan's lightsaber? So clearly they are trying to get people to think about that saber because it has significance in the new trilogy. So what is Rey doing there? Well, she actually isn't there at all. She's a remote viewer in the vision. She obviously wasn't actually in the hallways of Cloud City or at Luke's burning temple or behind herself on Jakku or in the rain when Kylo killed the clan. Also, the clan leader isn't attacking Rey either, as she's not there, and he's fighting the Knights of Ren. It's just a weird camera angle. But Kylo Ren does suddenly notice Rey. So what's going on? Well, the theory is that Kylo Ren is also having a force vision at this moment, which explains why the Knights of Ren are all staring at Kylo as he just stands there in a daze. What's more, Kylo's vision and Rey's vision are connected. They can see one another in each other's visions. Rey's vision is triggered when she touches Anakin's lightsaber, where she sees Anakin's descendant. And Kylo Ren's vision is triggered when he touches Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber, where he sees Obi-Wan's descendant. And in the Force Awakens novel, Rey even sees a little boy at the end of the hallway in her vision. And an editor for The Force Awakens revealed that Snoke was originally in the hallway with that little boy. So obviously this is Ben Solo as a child being corrupted by Snoke. Rey sees herself as a child too. So in Kylo Ren's vision, he must see himself as a child and this little girl. He then sees the girl as an adult in front of him in the rain and in a forest. But just as Rey saw Kylo Ren with a helmet on in the forest, even though he didn't actually have one on later in the movie, Kylo Ren is seeing Rey with her face mask on. This explains why he doesn't recognize her when he meets her for the first time later in the film. But Kylo clearly does have a connection with Rey and he has seen her before. The two were accompanied by a girl. <laughs> what girl? The girl I've heard so much about. She's just beginning to test her powers. The longer it takes to find her, the more dangerous she becomes. You need a teacher! <laughs> I can show you the ways of the Force! In the script, when Kylo is probing Rey's mind, it even says, Kylo Ren nearly touches her face. They're both surprised. They react to a feeling that passes between them, an energy they recognize in each other. And later, when Rey grabs Anakin's lightsaber out of the snow, Kylo Ren has finally connected the dots and says, It is you. His words unsettled her. Not for the first time, he seemed to know more about her than she did about herself. This is when he realized that she was indeed the girl from his vision. The girl he saw when he held the lightsaber of Obi-Wan Kenobi.
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're not already subscribed and you want to see more fan theories, click that subscribe button because I upload videos like these all the time. I'd also like to say that I do still think that Rey is related to Palpatine and it would be absolutely crazy if her father was a descendant of Palpatine and her mother a descendant of Obi-Wan. Let me know what you guys thought about this theory down in the comments down below and feel free to share this video if you really like the theory. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Just to the